Hey, what is up, Flav City family? Today, we are gonna make homemade avocado oil mayonnaise and continue the condiment series. I think you guys are as excited for this one as I am because it's crazy easy to make, but more importantly, it's higher quality and way cheaper than any avo oil mayonnaise you can buy at the store. We just need a couple ingredients and it only costs under $3 to make homemade avocado oil mayonnaise that you're gonna love. So before we rock this super duper easy recipe, hook me up, subscribe to my channel because every single week, sometimes twice, sometimes thrice, we're rocking out the best recipes, the most healthy recipes on YouTube, and I would love for you to join the Flav City community. All right, unlike any avocado oil or any kind of mayonnaise you can buy at the grocery store, this one starts with one pasture-raised egg yolk. Why is that so important? We've talked about it in every haul video, pasture-raised eggs taste better, they have higher nutrition, and they're from chickens that actually go outside. I don't care about cage-free. Many of these expensive mayonnaise labels say cage-free, free range. That's a marketing gimmick. And there's gonna be more about that soon because me and my friend Paul are gonna make an egg video that debunks all the myths and rumors out there and all the labels. So, one egg goes in there. Let's measure in half a teaspoon of really good salt. This is uh, this real salt that people seem to be really excited about. Let's measure in one tablespoon of fresh lemon juice, and then we'll add some water later on to help thin it out. Let's measure in one teaspoon of Dijon mustard. I do wanna beat up the egg and get the party started. Just whisk that together. Now here's the deal. One egg yolk calls for one cup of avocado oil. If you wanna double the recipe with two egg yolks, you need two cups of oil, but that makes two cups of mayo and I don't quite need that much. Now this is where it gets a little tricky or time consuming. You can use the blender per se. You can use this little gadget I have here called the immersion blender or what would Emerald call this art? Boat motor. The boat motor, okay. But the real old school way to make it is by hand, and you're basically trying to emulsify fat into fat, which doesn't really wanna happen, which is why you have to drip, drop, and drizzle this in very slowly, at least for the half, first half of the cooking process, or the first half of the whisking process. Because if you do it any quicker, and trust me, you're gonna wanna do it quicker because you're gonna get antsy and tired, you're gonna break the mayonnaise. So if you're doing this in a food processor or by hand blender, you have to do it at this pace too any quicker and you're gonna break it. Desi's gonna be my official pourer. And Desi kinda has a penchant of going quick. And I always have to tell her, slow down. So that's the stream you want right there. Check it out, Art. Anything more than that, I would go less, babe. A little less. It's fine, babe. And I have the bowl on a silicone placemat here, so it's not running around. And this is it. You're emulsifying fat into fat. And I'm gonna check it for seasoning about halfway through and maybe add some water to thin it out. This will stay in the fridge for about five to seven days. And once you have this base, you can make any flavorings you want. So imagine roasted red pepper, uh, mayonnaise, chipotle mayonnaise, sriracha mayonnaise. It's really- Aioli. Aioli, yeah. Once you start doing that, it's the French version, the aioli. Or you can roast some garlic and put that in there too. Aioli means with garlic, right? That's true. Very good one, Desi. It does mean with garlic. You know how they call regular mayo aioli at the restaurant? Yeah, they, they're very fancy these days. Yeah, but it's just mayo. I know, there's no, there's no garlic in it. The only difference between aioli and mayonnaise is $5. <laughs> if you're gonna do this in a food processor or use a hand blender or a blender, you need at least two egg yolks because you need something for the blade to catch on to. It won't work with one egg yolk. And you have to work a little faster with the food processor because oh, yes. uh, the heat from the blade is going to just scramble your uh, mayo. Yeah, the heat from the it's engine too. It's a little too. trickier. Uh, the safest way I think to make mayo is this method. Yep. It's a little slow, but it's well worth the time and the mayo is delicious. Totally. Okay, half of the oil is incorporated. It's kind of thick. So Desi, why don't you add just under one tablespoon okay. of water. Remember, you could always add more water later on, but you can't take it away. See how that lightened up really nicely? That's good. And during the second half or the last half of the mayo making process, you can get a little more aggressive with your pour because the emulsion has really started and it's strong. 
and the likelihood of it breaking now is very, very low. If you guys are worried about eating a raw egg yolk, you can buy the pasteurized eggs and it's safe to eat raw then. Yeah, and it will last longer in the fridge. Ah, good point, mayo. yes. And it's better to use a room temperature egg for uh, making the mayo too. But if you forget, don't worry about it. This is too thick for me, right? A little too thick. So Desi, why don't you add a half tablespoon more of water? Beautiful, right? Creamy, delicious, mm, healthy good. avocado oil mayo made with pasture raised eggs. It makes exactly one cup and it costs a three dollars. Less than three dollars. It actually costs just under three dollars. If you wanted to make or buy one cup of store-bought avocado mayo, it's six sixty-six. So under three dollars versus six sixty-six. This is a twelve-ounce container, so this costs nine ninety-nine. Twelve ounces of my homemade mayo cost under four fifty. All right, let's check it for seasoning. That's so good, mm -hmm. you guys. So much creamier and tangier and more flavorful than any store-bought avomato I've had. It's so perfect. It's gonna keep in the fridge for about five to seven days. You can't freeze it, but man, smearing that on sandwiches. And using that, what else can you use it for? Your chicken salad. Oh yeah, you guys, I have a curry chicken salad and keto chicken salad with cloud bread bun. Use this for the dressing. It is going to be next level, better than any chicken salad you've ever had. And the roasted cauliflower salad. The roasted keto cauliflower salad with broccoli and uh, cauliflower served with fennel spice chicken thighs. That's it, you guys. There it is. Secret sauce. Oh yeah, my homemade secret sauce <laughs> recipe for the keto shrimp burgers with uh, mayo, ketchup, relish, so totally bomb if you use the homemade mayonnaise. But that's it, super simple. Um, we did not need to make this video this long, but we're just bantering and having a good old time. You can make this in no time. Stop buying the overpriced store-bought avo mayo. Make this with the recipe down in the description box, along with the macros, all that good stuff. Share this video. Check out the other videos in our condiment series, Keto Ketchup and Keto Barbecue Sauce. Pretty soon, Keto Sugar-Free Dill Relish. Um, that's it. Those videos are down below us right now, but Desi and I will see you very soon. Until then, hashtag keep, keep on, on cooking. cooking. Peace, y'all.